Hey guys, how's it going? Preparing here. So today I wanted to explore a very cool card, Echo of Mediv. And uh, I did this pretty much in the best way possible. You know, you make a deck around a card just to see how good it is. And I had, in this case, a lot of success. And it was uh, very surprising to me. So I wanted to share with you guys my thoughts on the card because generally this is what I do. I play Constructed to see how good the cards are. And I think I have a pretty good view. And the reason I do this is because, well, I want to know exactly how good they are when I play Arena. Now, a card like Echo of Mediv, when I first looked at it, I did mention that in Arena, it's probably a pretty good card because even if you have like two creatures on board, you can just Echo of Medivum and you kind of gain card advantage, kind of like Thought Steal. And that's what this card is fairly similar to. But in Constructed, I felt it was generally too slow and it'd be a very, very niche card. But I had a lot of success with my deck, which I'll show you guys in just a second. Um, Specifically because, well, I queued up against uh, a lot of handlock and uh, did pretty well against that. This is the Medivh Mage I've been playing today. I think the win rate is in the 70s, maybe even 80s. I think I went on like an 8 or 9 game, game win streak. And the idea of the deck is to basically gain card advantage with Echo of Mediv and combo in many different sorts of ways. The base of the deck is uh, basically the mech mage. It's missing a few of the mechs because I had to put in other stuff as well. It's also missing Fireball poly Polymorph because I feel those cards um, aren't good tempo enough uh, in mage anymore. Uh, Polymorph might be, but I didn't really need it. So this is how Echo of Mediv really, really works. Uh, it works extremely well with Molten Giants. If you have a uh, very low life, um, you can play Molten Giant from your hand or two Molten Giants from your hand for zero mana cost and then drop an Echo of Medivh and get two more in your hand and drop those again for, you know, zero. And if you're lucky enough to have another Echo of Medivh, you can do that again and basically fill up a board of seven, eight, eight creatures for eight mana. And the only reason you wouldn't play the eighth one is because your board would be full. So there's some, you know, really, really efficient combos there. But to set that up, you really have to use Ice Block, which is why it's in the deck. It's so if you are low on life and your Ice Block is up, which very often it will be because you're running the Mad Scientist crap, um, you can do this combo and not die the next turn. You don't have to worry about taunts. You don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. So you can just fill the board, mass it up, and zerg your opponent with giants. And this kind of happened like once, but again, I didn't play the game that that much. But I felt the Molten Giant was still a pretty good addition to the deck. Um, because the deck is running a lot of uh, the mech stuff, uh, you get a lot of wins just because you zoo your opponent down when they get a bad hand. But in the other case, you kind of prepare yourself for the end game, and there are a lot of combos with Echo of Medivh, and I, I really feel this is the source of the deck. I think without this card, uh, it'll just run out of steam, which I feel is the main problem in the uh, general mech mage. So Echo of Medivh combos extremely well in a mech deck because of Mech Warper. So when you have Mech Warper uh, in play, along with, let's say, two other mechs, you can Echo of Mediv, and even though it doesn't seem like very good value, because when you play your second Mech Warper, it'll cost one mana, and each of the other two mechs after that will cost probably zero mana. So you can kind of make up for the cost of Echo of Mediv by playing it with Mech Warper in that sense. And because you're playing all these different mechs, you have a lot of other cards, a lot of other synergies, which I'll talk about in a second. Uh, the, because of this, the deck actually almost never ran out of steam. Um, and it's very interesting. Echo of Medivh acted in a way kind of like a sprint. Um, there is some technicality using it, though. You kind of want to hit at the very least two creatures. If they're two creatures, you want them to be pretty big. But in general, uh, you can help this because it runs double mirror entity. Usually a mirror entity card will stay alive, um, you know, the turn after it triggers. So let's say if you have like one creature on board with Mirror Entity up, your opponent plays a card, you keep the creature, his creature, whatever that may have been, and then you play a creature, then you Echo of Medivh. So that's kind of like how you gain the value in this deck, and it won't run out of steam. And because it won't run out of steam, and because it doesn't actually draw, this type of deck, because of this card, will actually beat, I think, every other deck in terms of fatigue. The only other draw in this deck is like Acolyte, and you know, I, I never really had an empty hand. So Echo Medivh works very, very well with Mirror Entity. That's why I have that in there. That's why I have the Mad Scientist to get all the secrets out of the deck. So, you know, you can get your Mad Scientist, Echo of Medivh. You can get more than two Mad Scientists in the deck and just do a lot of crazy stuff. And most of the crazy stuff has to do with the current um, uh, type of Mech Mage idea. It's that because you get a lot of spare parts just playing um, the Mech Mage, 
It makes cards like Mana Worm, so whenever you play a spare part, because a spell part is a spell, it can gain a lot of buffs. That's why I use Mana Worm, and I don't have many spells in the deck. I actually have basically no spells in the deck outside of Secrets and the One Flame Strike. Um, but also, you can bank up these uh, spare parts, and eventually you'll draw your Archmage Antonidas. And when you do, you can convert three spare parts in the same turn that you play him to three fireballs, and that's basically your win condition. And uh, surprisingly, uh, because it's an aggressive deck but doesn't run out of steam because of Echo of Medivh, it actually almost always, you know, has that endgame win condition. Like, I've, I've done games where I'm down to like three or four cards against Handlock, right? They're out. And then, you know, I, I just draw my deck. I'm just keeping up with them. Um, just because of this card. So it's phenomenal if you really build around it. Well, I don't know if this type of deck will really work uh, for the long end, uh, but I do have to say that this, this card is surprisingly good and surprisingly effective when you build your deck for it. And right now, it's working. So you guys should really give it a try. It's much better than it looks, and I think this is actually one of the best, if not the best, epic card for mage and arena. Now that's a little bit debatable because you know sometimes when you have a shitload of fireballs it's a pretty good idea to pick a pyroblast in the epic slot in arena but eh, I think it's still pretty close and it I know it doesn't look like it but trust me try it check it out let me know how it goes and uh, just so you guys have some idea of just how powerful the card is in action I included one of my best games today where uh, you guys will see just how awesome this type of deck with this type with this card uh, can really be. I mean, if you hate handlock, you're gonna love this card. All right, I guess. I really need to dodge a Dark Bomb. Okay. That card may have been for the game. Because I'm gonna be behind here. A Drake. With my hand, I really can't get board cleared here, or else I'm going to lose. Good face. Ah, oh, shit. Hit face, hit face, hit face.
enable Molten Giants if I attack. How low can I get him? I'm getting like six. the two Molten Giants or Molten Giant Shadow Flame. So, I guess I'll take the chance. Don't tell me. Molten Giant top deck. Threatening lethal before Jaraxxus, he top deck the last Molten, so he has to top deck another one, or he has to have another Shadow Flame. Both are very unlikely. That's a good play. Quite impressive, actually. Well, I have this. I think I might just echo again. Echo, give that stealth trade. And you can't stealth their taunt, that would be so overpowered. with Toshley. If he gives me the swap, I can ping off the taunt. Nope, okay. Uh, so I'm not gonna play Toshley then. I'm going to play another Drake. A duplicate. You have to admit, it's a pretty cool deck, isn't it? I've played five drakes and I don't actually have any in my deck. <laughs> okay, so he 
is healing a whole lot. Okay, we need some spells now. So let's play this. Freeze a minion. Okay, I think I'm just gonna go into that. I think developing ice block is fine. Hellfire time. All death rattles. How far time? Where's the shadow flame? How far? Oh my god. That's not what I wanted to see. I got a doomsayer. <laughs> Sick! It's like four or five wins in a row now. <laughs> 